Hello and welcome back. In the previous few videos, we've talked about Newton's first and second law. In this video, I want to introduce Newton's third and final law, which is normally stated as, for every action, there is an equal but opposite reaction. So what exactly does this mean? Basically, what Newton's third law is saying is that when an object exerts a force on another object, this second object exerts a force of equal magnitude in an opposite direction on the first object. So writing this out as an equation, this is what we get. The force exerted by object 1 on object 2 is minus the force that object 2 exerts on object 1, where this minus sign here indicates that this force is in the opposite direction as the other force. So the force that object 1 exerts on object 2 is in opposite direction is the force that object 2 then exerts back on object 1. So let's look at a simple example. A spacecraft has a mass of 11,000 kilograms. An astronaut working on the spacecraft has a mass of 95 kilograms. If the astronaut exerts a force of 36 newtons on the ship, what is the resulting acceleration of the man and the ship? So let me just open up a little white screen here. I'm just kind of draw a picture of what's going on. So we've got this guy here, this astronaut, and he exerts a force on the ship. So here's the ship. So the guy exerts a force on the ship. And when this happens, according to Newton's third law, the ship is going to exert an equal and opposite force back on the astronaut. So if I draw a free body diagram of the astronaut, there is a force that the ship exerted back on the astronaut. So this is the force that the ship exerts on the astronaut. And then of course if I draw a picture of the ship, there's the force that the astronaut exerted on the ship. So these are our two free body diagrams for the astronaut and the ship when the man pushes the ship. So when the man pushes the ship, the ship pushes back on the astronaut, causing him to get pushed away from the, uh, the spaceship. So let's go ahead and use Newton's second law now to find the accelerations. So the sum of the forces on the ship is equal to the mass of the ship times its acceleration. So the force on the ship, this is the force the astronaut exerted on the ship is equal to the mass of the ship times its acceleration. If I solve for the acceleration, this is the mass of the astronaut exerted on the ship divided by the mass of the ship, and this is equal to 0 0.0033 meters per second squared. So the ship moves very, very slowly because it has a large inertia because it weighs 11,000 kilograms. What about the acceleration of the astronaut? Well, again, the sum of the forces on the astronaut is equal to the mass of the astronaut times the acceleration of the astronaut. So the force on the astronaut is the force that the ship exerts on the astronaut. And this is equal to the force, this is equal to minus the force that the astronaut exerted on the ship. So solving for the acceleration of the astronaut, I see this is minus the force that the astronaut exerted on the ship, divided by the mass of the astronaut. Plugging this into a calculator, I see that this is going to be equal to, let's see, uh, minus 0 0.39 meters per second squared, where this minus sign here indicates that the acceleration of the astronaut is in the opposite direction as the acceleration of the ship. So when the astronaut pushes the ship, the ship moves in one direction, and the astronaut is pushed back in the opposite direction. So let's look at another example. This example says you push two block boxes that are set side by side as shown in this picture here. Box 1 has a mass of 10 kilograms and box 2 has a mass of 5 kilograms. You apply a force of 30 newtons and we're asked to find the acceleration of the boxes and then we're also asked to find the uh, force that box 2 exerts on box 1. So this is the force that box 2 exerts back on uh, box 1. So, let me go ahead and open up a blank page here. 
Uh, so let me write down what we know. We know that M1 is equal to 10 kilograms. M2 is equal to 5 kilograms. And I'm asked to find the acceleration, and I'm asked to find the force that box 2 exerts on box 1. Okay. So the first thing I want to point out is that if we have, so here we've got this box 1, M1, and then I've got M2. Whenever you have two things that are connected, or you know they're touching so that when one object accelerates, the other object accelerates at the same rate, whenever you have something like this, you can treat these two objects as if they're a single object that has a mass that's equal to the combined masses of these two things. So if I do that, so here I say, okay, well, what's my applied force? Well, my force, the net force on this thing is equal to So the net force acting on these two boxes is equal to the sum of the two masses times its acceleration. So this is 30 newtons. This is going to be equal to 15 kilograms, right? So my acceleration is the sum of the forces divided by m1 plus m2. Again, I'm treating this whole thing like it's, like it's a single mass because the whole thing is going to move together with the same acceleration. So if I do this, if I plug this in, I've got 30 newtons divided by 15 kilograms, I see that this acceleration is 2 meters per second squared. So that's the acceleration of these two boxes together. Now, if I go ahead and I just consider a single box, so actually let me go ahead and um, let me erase this to make myself some more room. And let me go ahead and write in the top now. My acceleration is 2 meters per second squared, because I know that now. And let me draw a free body diagram of the box M1. Okay, And I'll put a little dashed dotted box here. This is M1. I'm sorry, this is M2 here. This is M1. So there are two forces that are acting on M1. Well, actually, I guess there's four, really. We've got the force due to gravity that points down and a normal force that points up, but they're not important because they cancel out. I've got this 30 Newton force that I've applied. And then also, there's the force that box two exerts on box one. Likewise, if I go ahead and I draw a free body diagram for box two, I'll put it a little dotted box here for box one. So here's M1, here's M2. So again, there's these four forces on M2. There's this force to gravity that cancels the normal force, and we don't really care about them. And then there's this, sorry, three forces, and then there's this force that box one exerted on box two. So at this point, it's very easy to solve for the force that box 2 exerts on box 1. I can either apply Newton's second law to this box and solve for it, or I could apply Newton's second law to this box. Now, in the spirit of using the third law of physics, I'm sorry, Newton's third law, let me go ahead and use this second box here. So looking at the second box, I can see that the only force that's, the, the net force that's acting on this box is equal to the force that box 1 exerts on box 2. So the net force on box 2 is equal to m2 times the acceleration. And this is the force that box 1 exerts on box 2 is equal to m2 times acceleration. Well, right away I can solve for this because I know what m2 is and I know what my acceleration is. So this is equal to 10 newtons. And if I call this the positive direction, this is the positive x direction, then the force that box 1 exerts on box 2 is plus 10 newtons. Now, if I use Newton's third law, the force that box 2 exerts back on box 1 is equal to minus the force that box 1 exerted on box 2. Well, I know that the force that box 1 exerted on box 2, that's what we just found. That was 10 newtons. So the force that box 2 exerts backwards on box 1 is minus 10 newtons. And this is why this box right here only accelerates at 2 meters per second squared. Because I apply a 30 newton force over here, but then box 2 applies a 10 newton force backwards. So the net force on this object here is 20 newtons, 
And since I had a mass of 10 kilograms, that means I accelerate at 2 meters per second squared. Notice again the minus sign. This minus sign here indicates that the force that box 2 exerts on box 1 points to the left in the negative direction. And so at this point, I think I'm going to end this video. And in the next video, I'm going to talk about uh, inertial reference, flame, uh, reference frames. So we'll talk about uh, in what types of situations you can apply Newton's laws and when Newton's laws uh, don't apply because of the reference frame that you're in.